well, good afternoon. Uh, I do think this is an important moment. Uh, as you can see behind me, it's uh, many restaurant and bar owners from, frankly, all places in the state. Uh, we reached out, the, out to them just today, and this is the kind of numbers that you have. I believe all of these restaurant and bar owners are following the law, but they are in a desperate place. And I, I have to tell you that we have heard the cries in the last 24 hours, and I think literally cries for a number of people that this last executive order is like a last straw or a slap in the face where it's impossible to work with. There's no way in 10 below that you're going to have many people outside. And so it's like the nail in the coffin. And what are we going to do about it? Well, first of all, they need a voice. And, and as the Senate, uh, Senate Republicans in particular, we're here to bring hope. And it's hope that they can make through this and hope that we can convince the governor and the attorney general that they have to relent that this is not okay. And then when I heard that the, the Attorney General has actually took a list of those that were desperate, desperate, and said we're gonna have to open up anyway, and started calling that group and seeing that group and telling them they're gonna be fined $10,000 and pull your liquor license for 60 days, that's over. Their, liv their livelihood is literally done. If they're that desperate that they're willing to go against the grain and do this, that should tell you something. And we are hearing it over and over. The cries are so loud, and we are standing up with them and saying, we have to figure out a way. And you think about it, Wisconsin, Colorado, other places do not have these extreme regulations. Their restaurants, their bars are open. Their fatalities related to COVID are lower than ours. Think about that. So it's not about that. And the last thing I'll say, and then I'm going to turn it over to these folks, because that's who you really need to listen to. But Hospitality Minnesota says it's about 1% of the COVID cases are related to the bars and restaurants. We don't know the exact number. But go ahead and look at Wisconsin. Go ahead and look at Colorado and decide for yourself. Should we try to figure out how to help these people to be open, safely doing it, keeping people, letting people come, and be mindful of COVID. If you're over 70 in particular, you should pay attention. It is a very dangerous virus. I believe we can do both. And so with that, I want to invite, I think there's going to be four or five people that are, are going to speak. I want you to hear their stories. And again, these people are trying to do it right. They're trying not, but, but they, are, they can reflect that desperation I'm talking about. So who's, who's next? We'll go from there. Come up, state your name, share your story, and then we'll move forward. And then I'll take questions. And I'll take with the uh, questions at the end. Well, thank you, everyone, and really appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak up on you know be behalf of our restaurant and and others as well. Um, I would say it's been difficult to to really adapt to this you know new normal. It it it, it really is and. Uh, you know, I own Lava Burgers and Wings in Owatonna. Um, the first time around was difficult, and we made some adjustments, so, so that's a good thing. But, you know, when we knew that this was going to happen again, uh, and to not have resources available uh, proactively it is, is, to me, is unacceptable because we have a responsibility. We're all part of the same ecosystem. We have the same responsibility to not just the owners, but the communities, communities that they serve, to the employees that work there. And so it's really difficult as an owner to talk to employees about why you can't give them hours, why you can't uh, um, give them shifts so that they can take care of you know, their families, their holiday needs. Uh, so I think that's that's very difficult. I know that even at the federal level, you know, I, I saw an article about folks scrambling at the federal level to avoid a shutdown uh, in, in the government, right? And, and to ensure that there's resources available. But, you know, there's not that same approach that takes place at the state level where why didn't we scramble we knew that this was going to happen. Why didn't we scramble, have resources available so that our bars, restaurants, all those businesses affected have resources 
um, in place before the mandatory shutdown. So I think it's um, it, it's it's difficult to really manage through that, and and we hope that the same level of expectation of all business owners. Uh, restaurant owners, bar owners, of being nimble and, and creative and resourceful is the same expectation at the state level so that we have proactive resources so we can help take care of our communities and our customers and our employees. Thank you. I think we have Janice next. Remember to say and spell your name and your, or your business. Hi, thank you for letting me speak today. My name is Janice Quinlan Guerin, and um, I and my husband own Quinny Sports Bob and Docks Landing, White Bear Lake, and uh, Montemidae. Um, we are we are local family-run businesses, and it we have small communities. Um, we are the place that people go to, and now that they have. They don't have that place to go to. They are running to Wisconsin. Um, I have a small amount of employees and who are calling and texting me daily. Um, the amount of emotion that comes from them is beyond what you could ever imagine. Um, I just don't understand why this last weekend I could go to the airport and eat and drink at the airport bar and restaurant and then get onto a plane, yet I can't go into my restaurant or bar and where we take such great precautions. Um, we social distance, we, uh, the staff wears masks, we clean nonstop. Um, as far as I know, we haven't had one single case that anybody has come up to me and said, I believe that I got COVID from your restaurant. Um, we take care of people. And at this level now, it is so crushing. And the other side of that is being a family-run business. My son is my manager. And to see him and what it has done to him emotionally is so difficult as a mother. And to hear the people come in to get takeout and to hear their stories of what they're going through as well is very hard on us. And it's, it's not a good thing for a community. And we're Americans and we're tough, but this is doing a number on us. So I just want to thank you for letting me speak today. Do you want to go next? Hi, I'm Jean Hun. I'm with Keys Cafe and Bakery. We have nine restaurants. We have one in Hudson and we have eight in the Twin Cities. Our restaurant in Hudson is open. It is really frustrating and difficult when we can't tell our employees here in Minnesota that they don't have any hours, they don't have any work, but they can go across 25 minutes across the way and get hours at our Hudson location, which is incredibly busy. What's really difficult is, like all of us restaurateurs have stated, is we have done everything you have asked. We have gone above and beyond. We have adjusted. We have punted. We have thrown down, you know, it's just everything you've asked, we do. We haven't complained. We've done it, and we keep getting through it. But at some point, it's exhausting. There's only so much, and like the uh, woman pri prior to me, we're a family-owned restaurant. I have my kids working for me. And to have, to tell our employees they just need to wait it out, we'll be okay, that's not the case. It's, two weeks is fine, a month is fine. It's not even fine. Not when you have all these other businesses that are allowed to operate. They're allowed to have hundreds of people come in. There's no, the, the things that we have gone through, it is exhausting. And I, when it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. And even this last, to extend it again to the 11th, I'm not a bar owner, but for those bar owners that are missing a whole nother weekend of revenue during their busiest time, there is zero thought and telling us we can open up outside is just a slap in the face. It's like you're mocking us. So you need to help us. We're your second largest employer. You need to help us. Let us open up. 
We're not the super spreaders. We're not the spreaders at all. So let us open up. It's our right. Thank you for your time. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Jeff LeBeau. I've owned the Depot Barn Grill in Faribault, Minnesota for 30 years. I bought it in 1991. I was 23 years old. And, you know, it wasn't easy when I did that back then, but I took the risk. And you know what? I got some dedicated, great employees that are doing their very best. Right now, this is not, just not affecting the restaurants. It's affecting employees that have um, spouses, they have children. With my restaurant with 50 employees, I have 350 employees right now, or not employees, I'm sorry, 350 uh, people that this is affecting. And if you look at all the restaurants right now in Fairbanks, that's 30% of the population. It's just ridiculous. When you can go to a grocery store or Menards, and those places are booming, but I cannot uh, um, you know, compete with them even. We're doing curbside business, but right now, who wants to eat outside? In the summertime, it's fine, but right now, who wants to eat outside right now? Uh, you know, we're just doing the best we can, and you know what? For me, I'll, I'll, I'll be okay for a while, not too much. I already took $250,000 out of my retirement, but right now, I'm committed to the community. I'm committed to my employees, because you know what? I don't want to disappear disappoint my employees that have dedicated their lives of 20 plus years, maybe 10, maybe five, uh, coming in right now. And I got my employees calling me right now saying, Jeff, what can we do? They're, they're, they're willing to volunteer. They're willing to come in and do whatever they can. But again, you know, this is just a ridiculous mandate that they're uh, uh, doing right now. You know what? Treat everybody equal. We're American citizens. If you want to shut everything down? Shut everything down. But why are you picking and choosing? Why are you... Uh, I, I feel like I'm on the Titanic, and this governor is making us a third-class citizen that has to be in the bottom of the ship. So he wants to drown us. He wants to drown us. You know, um, you know with that being said and whatnot, I, I, I'm dedicated. You know, I've, I've dedicated my whole life, ever since I was 14 years old, to the hospitality industry, and I've sacrificed Christmas... Uh, Thanksgiving, New Year's, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, and my kids. I've sacrificed that so I could give them the best opportunities. But you know what? I haven't always been there for my kids when I wanted to be there. Now I can be there with my kids, but I don't have any money to give to my kids. Um, and it's not just my kids or my employees. But, you know, with that being said, um, you know what? The governor needs to wake up. Wisconsin is open, South Dakota, North Dakota, Florida, Louisiana. I mean, and those are places that I've went to go visit because I'm just trying to see what their model is like. Um, but this model that this governor has right now does not make any sense. And I seriously, seriously appreciate your time, and thank you. Jeff LeBeau, have a nice day. How you guys doing today? My name is Leonard Morris. Um, I own a bar in Coon Rapids, Minnesota. It's called Leonard's Bar and Grill. And uh, just a little history on myself. Um, I used to be a touring artist, and I toured the country many, many a times making music. And I decided to go ahead and settle down and start a family. So I purchased a bar, which would keep me stable and, and close. So I didn't have to constantly travel and not be able to be there for the kids. Um, I opened February 7th of this year, and six weeks after opening, we got crushed with a virus that swept the country. Um, you know, the first shutdown, we managed, we did to-goes, we did carry-outs, we did whatever we had to do to survive. Now, at this point, um, I think it's asinine, it's absolutely ridiculous that um, our tax dollars are going towards people who really don't care about us or the businesses that we're doing. Um, to the limitations that they put on us, we've never had as much health restrictions as we ever have in, in the business that we're in, I mean, in the restaurant business. And we do every precaution. I mean, everything from hand sanitizers to six feet apart to masks. Um, you know, we, we definitely do everything that we can to ensure the safety of every patron that's in the building. Um, the dining outside, um, I recently just purchased fish houses. 
Um, and my staff behind me, um, like I said, the gentleman over here, I definitely can uh, agree with you that the staff is hurting. There's no relief plan. They have mortgages, they have children. I've been doing everything in my power, so what I did was I started a, my own de uh, delivery service for them so they can make tips. Now, speaking on that, uh, I, we got a threatening call um, from, uh, I'm assuming is a citizen in the, in the area, telling me that if I open my fish houses at my bar, um, that they were gonna call and get me arrested from the police. Now, I've never been scared, and I still won't be, and I'm gonna stand for what I believe in regardless, um, but the biggest problem, I believe, is citizens policing businesses, and it's disgusting. If you don't wanna go out, and you are scared for your life, you can stay inside, but don't, don't stop us from living life, and let us business owners provide for our families, provide so we can have a roof over our head, let us do the things that we need to do to stay due diligence for us as, as a state, because, I mean, all of our tax money is going to Wisconsin, which makes very little to no sense. But, I mean, give us the chance to open. I mean, we're not asking for much. Give us 25%. Give us anything. You know, gyms can open, Walmart, like they said, Menards, all these places can be open. You know, they shut down Thanksgiving, but they open up Black Friday, which I think makes zero sense. If you look at Mall of America, it was packed. Didn't see a mask on site. I didn't see six feet anywhere. But yet, being at a restaurant is so evil. It's, you know, and, and to be able to track a virus that they say takes 14 days to get, I think is pretty, pretty hard to tell where you got it from, but that's just my opinion. Um, but I mean, uh, like, I, like he said though, our staff is important. My staff is not my staff, it's my family. And I will stand up for them regardless. And you know, I appreciate you guys giving us the time and the platform to be able to talk about this because I'm sure there's a lot more business owners that are as stressed, if not more stressed than I am. And I'm only 31, I got my whole life ahead of me still, but I worked three jobs for my whole life to do this and just, I mean, I'll still be around, but it's just sad. Thank you for your time, guys. One more. One more. All right, you wanna go? Hi, Nort, that's N-O-R-T Johnson. I'm the president of the Faribault Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, a couple of, uh, I want to reiterate one thing. Um, you shared that the restaurants that have a desperation within them enough to put everything at risk and open up. I don't think anybody condones necessarily the wildness of what happened, but we need to listen to the message of the desperateness of these businesses, of these businesses that are all here and have shared their stories that they may not make it. They're barely making it now. We're drawing on our life savings and our retirements to keep businesses open. This is what you've heard. You know what I did not hear? I didn't hear anybody here asking for a handout. I didn't hear anybody here saying, come and do my work for me. What I heard was, let us do our jobs. Let us earn our money. Let us pay our employees. Let us serve our communities and our customers. Now, I have one thing also I want to share. As the Chamber of Commerce and Tourism and visiting with a half a dozen restaurants in my town this morning, the things that are very apparent are not just those things that I've shared right now. But I also regained and kept and restored any confidence that we should all have in our business owners to do their business. Don't hand them plans and guidelines that in no way, shape, or form can turn into a bottom line. I agree. I heard it earlier. That's an insult. Let these people manage their businesses. Give them the appropriate guidelines which they have had for months. We all understand distancing masks, and sanitizers. These are anchor businesses in every community. It's where people gather. It's where people feed themselves. It's where they celebrate. We need them. We can't have them closing down because of some of these mandates that are unmanageable. So I applaud every one of you for what you're doing, what you do for your communities, what you do for the people that live there, for your employees. Congratulations for coming up here today and being brave enough to voice your opinions and your feelings about what's going on. I'm prouder than ever to represent the business community today. Thank you for your time. Senator Gazelka, we do have one more. Tony from NLBA. And then Olivia, she was a little late. Could we just give her a few minutes? I would like to. You want to speak as well? 
uh, Tony Chesick with the Minnesota Licensed Beverage Association. She said a couple quick points because I know other folks have to speak as well. Um, we represent the bars, restaurants, and liquor stores in the state of Minnesota to the best of our abilities. And we did a poll. We got the results back last week. Um, well over a thousand respondents to our poll. Um, it's estimated that 84% of our on-premise businesses will not be here in the next 90 days if things don't change. Um, the economic relief package that was put forth that folks are already getting contacted about, I think in the mail and email, um, coming in an allotment of 10,000, 15,000, 25,000, 35,000, 45,000. Talk to one of my license holders. That won't pay his rent this month. Um, other fees, regulatory fees from the Department of Health, um, other licensing fees still are coming in. You still got to pay your insurance, still got to pay your bank for the mortgage. At the end of the day, the relief package is a good gesture. I think we all did our best to kind of coordinate efforts to get that bill moving along as quickly as we, as we could, but at the end of the day, um, <laughs> That doesn't do much for these businesses. Um, we're in the hospitality business for a reason. Um, you keep a new customer, you're good. If you get a new one, you're lucky. And we keep our people safe. We've been doing this for a long time. States around us are trending in the similar direction as us, but we seem to have the tightest mandates. Um, I speak for everybody in this room, but more eloquently, they speak for themselves. Um, we can open up safely, Governor. We can really do this if you give us a chance. Um, don't hold back. These people want to do the right thing. Um, and the staff need you too. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, my name is <clears throat> Livia Hughes, and um, we own a family restaurant, family style restaurant that we've had for ten years now. And I came here to speak on beyond for ourselves and also everybody else that could not be here today that wish to give a chance to state how this is really affecting everybody. And this is supposed to be America, the land of the dreams. And I just think that our dreams and the restaurant industry, this is our lives. This is our dreams that we put all of our everything into and that's being taken away and shut down and it's not fair to us and everybody here of every you know generation and race and we just go on a stick together get together and just unite and say give us the chance to live our dream and to be open and to be amongst the community as everybody else in this industries that are open, the stores, the merchandise. If they can be out and about in the public, why can they not come into a restaurant and sit down 50% capacity, 25, but come have a meal at a restaurant and be out and about and have a conversation instead of being depressed at home? they can come out. It's a big thing for a lot of people to be able to come out of their house and come out and sit down and have a dinner and have a conversation, meet a new friend. That's a big thing. And I just don't realize, I don't think that it's realized the importance of how much it's worth to come out and have that as an option instead of just being out in the public and getting your groceries, but how much the restaurant industry means to a lot of people, not just us as business owners, but our employees, our families, the friends and the customers that come in there for their livelihood. It does a lot of good for them also. So we're just saying, please give us a chance to be a part of everybody else and give us a chance to live out our dreams that we have all put into and live out what we came here to do. And just give us a fair chance, please, to be amongst everybody else. Thank you. Probably our last one before Senator Gazelka, you can close and take questions. Hello, thank you. My name is David Sutta, owner of uh, Mallard Restaurant. We opened a location in Inver Grove on March the 3rd, which was awesome this year because two weeks later we had to shut down. We weren't open long enough to get any financial aid because um, we had no history, so we've had to survive on our own all summer long. We also have a restaurant in Forest Lake. I think the most frustrating thing for, for me is to try to explain to my staff um, why they can't get hours, why they can't work um, during Christmas especially. Uh, the... the the governor um, talks about the science behind this, and 
and I, you know, I fail to see the science or the facts behind uh, the reason why people can't eat at restaurants, why my wife and I can't go out. My, there's been no proof that I've seen that, that it's shared between guests and our server staff. That has, we've had a few people that had it, and it hasn't even spread. We've, they've stayed home, they haven't got it, they've got it from being at home with someone. And I think the, the, the people that go out to restaurants, their family, their friends, um, and they're going to be at home together too. So it's kind of hard to prove the science that they got that at a restaurant. So if they're going to spend time together, why can't they spend a kind of time together at a restaurant and help support all the families and all the businesses uh, around the Twin Cities and in the state of uh, Minnesota? So it's very frustrating um, when we talk about science all the time, but there's really no proof and there's no science that, that they've shown us that it is restaurants. Um, they keep saying how it's a small percentage, um, but if you take the super spreader events that are out um, of the bars that don't follow, with the 99% of us that do follow the rules, you take that out, uh, it's probably not even a, enough percent to show up um, on, a, on a piece of paper. So it's, it's very frustrating to try to explain that. So we're doing our best. Uh, we don't want handouts um, like everybody set up here, but we do expect that you follow through. And if you say you're going to help us two months down the road, really doesn't help us out a lot. Most of us small business restaurants don't have a lot of money in the bank. Um, we're hoping for a great weekend in sales so we can meet our payroll. So some, some aid that happens two months down the road really doesn't help us that much. Uh, it really feels um, with the health department, like somebody said, that you know we have to spend thousands of dollars for a health department license of a business that we can't even operate. And, and then we're, we're warned that if we don't pay it, then we can't operate next year. Same thing with our liquor license. We have to pay a liquor license uh, for a business that we can't open, and we have to pay for a liquor license for next year for a business that we can't open. So uh, the, the tax um, uh, break for sales tax that you delayed for us in the spring, that you haven't done that. And it's just a governor's signature that lets the, tax, uh, the sales tax be delayed without penalties, but that's something that you still haven't done. So... It is frustrating, but uh, like all of these people up here, um, we will get through it. And uh, uh, in spite of all the things that happened, we, we will survive because that's what we do at restaurants. So thank you. So a couple of comments, and then I'll take some questions. But uh, why is the science in Wisconsin and the science in Colorado, in other places, why is the science there tell them that they can be open and that they can do it in a way that's safe and that their mortality rates related to COVID are less than Minnesota? And so you can't put the two together and say that we're going to close all these restaurants. And that is a message to the governor and all of these people here that have come really with a call about three hours ago that came from all around the state. This is not a reflection of the many that were so desperate that they opened up. They said, we've got to open up. And like I said earlier, when I heard that the Attorney General then is fining people $10,000 and pulling their license for 60 days, I want to remind him that next year we set a two-year budget and the legislative branch sets his budget. And we're going to look at how many $10,000 fines he inflicted on these people that were absolutely desperate. And I'm going to expect that to come out of his budget. This is that serious. We have to figure out a way to open these, these people up in a safe manner. Following, You've heard him say they follow the guidelines. They're social distancing. They're washing their hands. If their employees are sick, they stay home. They're wearing the mask. They can do it. And we've got to figure out a way to make that happen. And with that, I'll take any questions. David. Yeah, Dave Orrick with the Pioneer Press here. Uh, Senator Gazelka, to, to the last point you just made about science is different in Colorado and Wisconsin, from my chair, from talking with epidemiologists since this thing has begun, the, the science isn't different. The, the politics is different. But the, the science is, is that when people get together and they eat for a period of time, they, they pass this thing. And, I, and I'm interested in, in the rest of you. I know some of you said that you, you don't believe that you're the source. Of, maybe if I get a show of hands, how many of you reject the, the premise that, that I just implied, which is, um, what do we do about this, Senator? I mean, this is, this is the bulk of the public health community and a good portion of hardworking business people who are disagreeing on, on 
basic facts? Well, I, I believe that we can find a way for restaurants and bars to be open uh, in whatever capacity they can work uh, with the governor instead of the governor forcing his ma mandates on them and balance that against the, the COVID crisis, which I've mentioned is primarily people over 70 that are the ser most serious risk. I believe it's still under 100 people under age 50 in Minnesota have died of COVID. And so we know where, we know where the risk is and they know where the risk is and they know the things that they have to do to keep people safe. And I think they learned that early uh, and just like all the other businesses, the, the Targets, the Menards, the Home Depots, all the other businesses that are open and people are gathering in large numbers, they have a way to, to uh, they recognize that this is serious, but they feel like they can still function. And the, the proof is looking to Wisconsin where the courts uh, forbid their governor to shut them down and places like Colorado that have populations as big or bigger than Minnesota and yet the results related to COVID are really statistically no different, in fact, slightly less uh, than where they are in Minnesota. So, so how can we reopen safely? I, mean, I, I was just in Hudson this weekend, and the restaurants are full, and they look like there was no pandemic. And I don't believe that there's any public health official who will tell you that that is safe, given how much disease is in the community now. So what levels? 50%, 25 something? I really think it should be a local control issue when you think about uh, what we're going to do about this. Uh, but at Minnesota, I think, is, is different than a, a particular uh, densely populated city that has a high infection rate. I think that we can figure that out. Uh, and I do believe that they're smart enough to know that. And, and that's why I'm saying we, we can do both. That's, we want to bring hope to these uh, small businesses and, and restaurant, restaurant and bar owners and others that there's hope, that they're not going to fail, that we want them in our communities. And, and if we want them in our communities, we have to figure out a way for them to, to be open. And I think they know how to be open and battle this COVID. They're, they're not, they know that they need to protect their customers as well. And I, I really believe we can do both. We have some intro over here. Yeah. Come on. No, no, come you got to come to the microphone. Please, yeah. I'm only asking him because I didn't know which of you to pick up. No problem. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's on me all the time. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to make a comment back to that. Um, some, um, Jeff LeBeau, LA Capital B, EAU, the Depot Barn Grill for 30 years. I had a couple of friends that tested positive for COVID. And you know what? When the health department called them, they were like, where have you been? And they were like, well, we were at Menards. We were at Costco. We were at Home Depot. Well, no, 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 no. What restaurants and bars have you been at? None. None. But you know what? The health department did not even care to hear about Costco, Menards, Home Depot. They just wanted to know what restaurants, what bars, so they can pick on you. That's not science. And that is not science. And that is not science. And I'll tell you, I've done every precaution that I can possibly have. And you know what? I still have people coming in right now that want to do dine-in. I can't do that for you. I'm sorry. And they're like, why not? But I can go to Costco. I can get a chicken. You know, I can go get Caesar salad. It's, it's, it's just absolutely ridiculous because you know what? The government does not care. You know what? Those are big tax places that are making big money. And you know what? They could care less about the restaurants. But you know what? Oh, well, if you go to a restaurant, we'll shut them down. But you can go to Costco. With that, that's all I have to say. I had to, I had to respond to that because my friends, they didn't care about the restaurants or bars. They cared about where were you drinking and eating at. That's it. And you know what? I've been going to Wisconsin. I, 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 I haven't tested positive for COVID. I know it's a horrible, horrible, horrible virus. But you know the thing of it is social distancing, wash your hands, and, you know, um, um, sanitizer and, uh, you know, just do the best you can. Thank you. Anyone else want to respond to that? Or? Well, I just have one question, and oh. I'm right here. How come we're the only ones that have to take name and number? I don't know. Well, sure. I mean, but doesn't that kind of put us in a, in a little uh, succinct group when they're not asking Menards, they're not asking... Do you want to go to the microphone? Yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> You wonder why we're 
Jean Hun with Keys Cafe. I'm just wondering why, Governor, why we're the only ones that have to take name and number of guests that come. Why don't the targets, why don't, how, how can we not be the target when we're the only group in the only business that is required to take name and numbers? Senator Gazelka, I've got some other press questions that's been texted to me. And I'm gonna try and do these, let's see here. So I got a few here. Um, what what would your plan for reopening be? I know you've talked about it a little bit, but can you just reiterate what you would what you would do differently than Governor Walls? The question is, what would my plan be? And it, it is far more local control. Uh, you think about across the Minnesota, we are so different. Anywhere from Minneapolis, I always use Badat. I don't know why I should use Brainerd or some one of the other towns, but but think about that. And number two, uh, much more of cooperation between the government and whatever entity they're trying to to shut down. I, I really feel like we'd find far more answers than just telling them what's going to happen. And I think you heard today that we can do both. Another question. If uh, the business situation is so dire, why did we only approve $216 million? Why not more? The question was, why didn't we approve more than $216 million? Uh, because we have a budget shortfall that is coming. So we do next year, we do our two-year budget, and it's over a billion dollars short. And yet we felt it was so urgent. And, and I have to be honest, I was very frustrated that it, I don't think it was a result of COVID. I think it was a result of the, the policies that our governor made related to COVID that we have these crises. And so we came together, and I think that's good news. Uh, there are places we have not come together, but providing that re relief and then 13 weeks of unemployment, either from the state or from the federal government were, were a big part of it. And I thought it was the least we could do, but somebody here said it's, it's a good gesture. Uh, but frankly, if they can just do their business, that, that's the key. Right. And then how is your relationship with the governor right now? And what is your overall take on his approach the last nine months? Uh, my relationship with the governor up to COVID, I think, was very productive. We actually passed a, a two-year budget that uh, was balanced, and uh, we, we actually he adopted our middle-class income tax uh, reduction first in 20 years, uh, and we did a host of things, and we did it together. Once he had emergency powers, that's where everything fell apart because he was making all the decisions, and we could not stop or stand against those decisions. That's been incredibly frustrating. And so as we come into next year, now it's a two-year budget and we have to work together. And that's why I mentioned uh, we hold the purse strings now. Last year we did not. And we want it to be better. I, I will tell you, working on the vaccine, um, getting that out, uh, Trump really deserves the credit for that. Uh, they said it'd be a miracle if he got it out by the end of the year. That came to pass. But, the, but President Trump, Vice President Pence, the governor, and all four legislative leaders are working together on that. That's a good sign for Minnesota, frankly, that we're trying to find ways to work together. But when the governor makes a decision that I passionately disagree with, like this one, I have to stand up. When he said earlier that bars could open at 50, but churches could only have 10, I just said that there's no science that would justify that. And so it's in those situations where we lock heads, but or lock horns, I guess that'd be more accurate. But uh, my desire is that we figure out how to get on the same path together uh, going forward. Okay, should the bars and restaurants that opened yesterday in defiance face any kind of sanction? As a follow-up, do you believe the executive powers and authorities are, the executive orders are legitimate? So as far as the bars, I, 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 th I really think that we should, the, there, there should be a much less uh, oversight of these businesses that are ready to fail because government and the governor shut them down. And that's why I said when the attorney general actually gets the list and starts calling that list with the threats, I think that's the exact opposite approach. How do we help them survive? That's what we need to do. And what was the second part? Do you believe that the, emer that the executive orders are legitimate? Do they have authority? The executive orders do give the governor power, and most states have it, and I will tell you most legislative branches across the country are frustrated with this overreach of executive powers. And they worked, and they were really important in the very, very beginning when we needed masks and all of the, the beds and everything that we needed or, or felt we needed for this crisis. 
and the, the legislative branch gave the governor a half a billion dollars on a moment's notice. But after that, it shifted to a lot of other things that we disagreed with and we had no way of stopping him. This is by far the longest emergency powers ever in Minnesota, and, and we want to get it back to normal. I've always said I think the virus is serious, especially if you're over 70, uh, but that doesn't mean that the governor has to have the emergency powers and make all the decisions by himself. Last one for Senator Gazelka, and then Tony, I have one that someone submitted for you too. Um, Senator Gazelka, are you optimistic about the potential for federal assistance for the industry to pair with the state aid? Uh, I, I am hopeful that the federal government will work uh, like our state government has. We're divided, and yet we've come together. I do believe there will be a package of around a billion dollars. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm overall hopeful that we can get through this, that we can help these businesses, that we can get our kids back in school. Uh, I think people are looking for hope. I, I really think that's what they want. And, and we have the ability to give it to them. We have the ability to get kids back in school so they can be learning again. We have the ability for these businesses to open up. We have the ability to work together, get that vaccine out so that we can open up. I mean, I'd, I want to open up quicker than the governor, but in the end, we got to open up. Can I just follow up on yep. that, Senator? Um, yep. A bunch of people up here said, you know, we don't want a handout, but when they're struggling, they, they need help. Um, how much are you pushing and have you talked to um, the congressional delegation, uh, specifically the Republicans, to say, you know, get, a, get some money? Yeah, the question was how much have I been pushing our, our federal delegates, our Congress people, and I have had conversations with our congressmen on my side of the aisle. I feel, I feel like that's where I have the most influence uh, encouraging them. And one of the things I encourage them to do is make sure that this time around, if money is given, that it's under legislative oversight and not executive oversight. I think that was the big mistake is that uh, under executive oversight with emergency powers, there was really no need for the legislative branch, and I think that was a big mistake. Tony, can I ask the question of you? Sure. Uh, it's, it, yeah, you got to go up to the mic. <laughs> Brian Bax from NPR is wondering if your group supports the businesses that opened yesterday. Uh, the question was, uh, Tony Chesick, MLBA, the question was whether or not the MLBA supports businesses that were opened up yesterday. I, my take on that is, is desperation and what are folks going to do when they haven't paid their mortgage? Christmas is around the corner. The kids should get something. Um, I've been through a couple of food drives over at the Nome and at FEMA in Minneapolis watching, watching hundreds of servers line up two, three blocks down the road an hour before they open up a tent for free food. Um, I don't own a bar restaurant. I represent these folks and have gladly for a long time. I, when times get tough and things get desperate, people do things to keep themselves above the waterline. And do I blame these folks? No, I don't blame these folks. They, they, they have to do something to survive, and the way they feel that they're being treated right now, um, the distraction is, is that there is the heavy hand that comes on the Attorney General, um, Alcohol Gambling Enforcement Division. I know that, um, I believe that Commissioner Harrison, Harrington came up with a, 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 a position letter on um, if you do A, then B. Um, we know what's going to happen if they open up. The people that are opening up outside of the executive orders have full understanding of what could possibly happen in their businesses. Um, either out of defiance or out of necessity, I think folks just have to find a way to survive. And so do I support them? It's a difficult spot they're in. Um, they have to make their decisions for themselves. And, it, and so far, it's been um, uh, pretty heavy-handed. Thank you. Thank you. Zelka, I got one more for you. Along those same lines... In your statement yesterday, business owners would do the right thing given the right rules. What is your response to the images of like Alibi Bar in Lakeville that had it packed, no masks, no social distancing? Say the last part again. In, in, so in your statement, you said businesses would do the right thing. So how do you respond to the images coming out of Alibi Bar where people were packed in with no masks, no distancing? I think it would be wise to, for them to follow the CDC guidelines, which is cover your cough, wash your hands, use sanitizer, stay home if you're sick, wear a mask. I mean, all of those are things that uh, I've gotten used to doing. Uh, if I go into a business establishment, even before it was mandated, if they wanted a, a mask, then I'd wear a mask. And so if that's what it takes for us to open up the businesses, then 
Let's do it and let's open up these businesses. Let's get beyond COVID and get back to normal. I think that's what we're all looking for. But this is the moment that we have to give them some help. And that help is lifting that heavy hand and letting them do their job. So with that, thank you. And thank you for all of you for coming down. Really appreciate it. If, speakers, before you leave, we've had a couple of requests to get names and spelling of restaurants. So if you spoke, I'm going to put this on the back table there. Please use hand sanitizer before you pick up the pen. Um, and please sign out before you leave. Sound good?